If you are here, please say hi to me in chat. I love to see who is hanging out with me, me this morning. Um, just thought I'd do a little vlog, talk about my sale this weekend. I had a big item sell. Um, <clears throat> and talk about what it means when you have a big, huge item sell on eBay or somewhere online. Um, there's so many mixed emotions about it. So, but... Before we get started, I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee here. I think I'm going to go get a manicure tonight. So tomorrow on Coffee with Kayla, I can have pretty nails and stop bitching and moaning about how crappy they look. And that way when I do my sourcing videos and show you guys the tags, I mean my haul videos and show you the tags, um, I don't feel like you have to see my ugly fingers. <laughs> they look pretty and manicured. <clears throat> Anyway, uh, just waiting for a few more people to join us. Who's here this morning? Say hi to me in chat. Just say good morning. Tell me where you're from, too. Like, I want to know where you're from. What are you doing? Are you sourcing this morning? Are you listing? Are you preparing for shipping? Remember, today is Martin Luther King, and it's a holiday for the United States Postal Service, so there is no shipping today, but are you getting it ready for tomorrow? Because that's what I have to do today. I know I need to at least paint my stubby nails or something, you know. I know Laura is not doing sourcing this week. And I'm really proud of her because this has been a, a struggle with her for a while. And to commit to a whole week is really pretty amazing. Good morning, Kelly. So Laura's in New Jersey. Kelly, where are you at? I'm just letting a few more people join us. Good morning. I can't believe how many people are here. This is so cool. Well, I'm going to be doing a few things today. I'm going to get my shipping ready for tomorrow. My, my kitty tucks. He wants attention, but he doesn't want to be on camera because he's a hipster and he thinks that vlogging is so 90s. Anyway, um, yes, it's a pajama part. It's always a pajama part. Oh, look, see, there he is. Tuck, say hi to the camera. Now, well, as always, the cat shows his butt. Anyway, um, yeah, I got scrubs on. That's kind of pajamas, right? Because <laughs> I like to work in scrubs. They're, they have pockets and they're comfortable. And then a lot of times they're cute. Like this one's a Hello Kitty one. So it's kind of cute. Anyway, all right. So I wanted to talk a little bit about when you get a really expensive sale on eBay or Etsy or wherever it may be. And how it's exciting and thrilling and at the same time terrifying. Because it is. Because you know its value. Whether you have a lot invested in it or not, it is valuable to you. And, you know, taking a return for something high priced, you know, is scary, you know. So I'm going to first talk to you about how I acquired this item and show you a couple of them. And then um, I'll talk to you about the sale and my, you know, my feelings on it. My feelings. You, I will let you all be my therapist, okay? I don't think you guys can handle it. <laughs> you guys will be like, nah, she's still nuts. Okay. So <clears throat> when we first moved out here to California about six years ago, Doug was unemployed and um, I was two. I, well, I wasn't for long. I, I went back into retail management pretty much right after we got here. But um, he had been laid off from a company he had been with. It happens in the engineering field quite often that they will go through like rolling layoffs and so forth. And so we had made this huge move to a more expensive area in the world and he was laid off and I was making crap money in retail and I wanted to do our own business. I have always been an entrepreneur at heart. Like my father was, my father, 
started business after business while he worked full time for Ford Motor Company and then for Northrop later. And he just put the bug in me that, you know, and I just like working for myself. Um, I, I like being the boss of me. <laughs> and so um, it's really hard sometimes for me to have somebody else as my manager. And most of the times the reason is, and I don't care how vain or egotistical this is about to sound, but it's really hard working in retail and have some kid who has a degree be your boss only because he has a degree. He absolutely knows nothing about the business, is an idiot and lazy, and yet he's your boss because he has a degree. And it sucks. And, you know, I would try to smile and plug along, but the reality is I'm a very, very smart woman. And I understand things that sometimes these kids right out of college don't understand. And because they're my boss, they don't want to listen either. Um, so it's not easy for me to play nice with others. I know you guys are shocked, right? I'll let you just take a minute to think about what I just said. <laughs> anyway. Oh, good morning from South Carolina, Amy. Thank you for joining. Um, anyway, so when we moved out here, we had a little money to invest. And so I wanted to start buying and selling and flipping full time back then, I think, you know, but, um, one, I had only been doing it as a hobby for many years at that point, probably about a decade at that point. And I also, I think I was kind of educating myself on the wrong end of it. I was educating myself on the sourcing, not the business end of it. But in doing so, I did learn a lot about sourcing. So it would take a while before I would start realizing that there's this whole other business end of it that I needed to educate myself on, like the protocols with eBay, Etsy, and um, selling online in general, um, safety and security, um, just many other aspects that I didn't think of. I just thought of buying and selling for a profit. And I also thought that a profit was like doubling my money. And now I think that is not profit at all. So anyway, Hi, Melissa. Yes, it's jammy day. Okay, so I started going to storage auctions and other kinds of auctions, but storage auctions in particular. And I went for about six months before I bid on my first, um, my first storage locker. I would go to a storage auction with about $3,000 in my pocket and never bid on anything I just watched and I learned and I would stay after to see what the people had bought like with their money was it a good investment were they right with their hunches who really had knowledge I know that you can watch storage wars but also because I did this for six months I did go to auctions where storage wars was being filmed and I want you to know that a lot of it is real, but a lot of it is, I'm not going to say fake because it's not fake. It's um, just reshot at different locations, etc. cetera. So, um, and it's grueling to watch them film because usually when you go to a storage auction, it's very quick. We're going to bid on this locker. This is how much it is. You have five minutes to look at that locker. Get in line right here. Everybody look. You better move along because we have a lot of people to look at this locker today. We're going to start the bidding right now at $25. He'll give me $25, and they go sold. And we're moving on to this locker right over here. Everybody follow me to locker 422 or whatever it is. And it moves very fast. Um, even with several lockers, you can be in and out of there done within an hour. When Storage Wars would be filming, it would be hours because they would want to retake shots just like they do in Hollywood. Can we do that auction part over again? So, And then you still win, but I want you to pretend like you're bidding for them or whatever, and it would be exhausting. I wanted to learn. I wanted to buy. I didn't want to be on TV right then. I was just like, nah, can we move along? This is my business, you know? So... <clears throat> One day they were filming 
and they were filming, I want to say in Paris. And by this time, this is probably about the third or fourth time we had been when they were filming. Um, by the way, just a, a quick plug for Dan and Laura. I love Dan and Laura. They are as real as it gets. And if you ever, you know, do need an auctioneer company, Dan and Laura, American auctioneers, they're the best. So, hi, Flipped. How are you today? Flip my lid is here. Um, anyway, so while they were in Paris, I was getting irritated. <laughs> I think Barry outbid me on a freaking locker or something. I don't remember. But I remember feeling very irritated and felt like the day was taking too long. Good morning, Rhonda. <laughs> and so I said, hey, it, uh, you know, Seth, like, I don't know, it was like 9 or 10. And I said, at 11 o'clock in Hemet, there is another auction, same company, which I love American auctioneers. But that means they're not filming at the other one. So probably nobody will be there. Let's go to that other auction, honey. And some Doug was like, all right, let's go. So we went. I think we had a little breakfast system first. And then we headed out to Hemet, California. If you don't know what Hemet, California is, Hemet used to be a retirement community. Unfortunately, <clears throat> as um, the older people passed away, younger people moved in. And uh, it has become, unfortunately, like, run down and there's a lot of drug and crime in Hemet. It's also the home to Scientology. Um, I wish they would invest some of their bazillions of dollars into their community, but they do not. Anyway, just I digress right there for a moment. So we went. <clears throat> And I don't even remember whether this was the first locker they showed us or fifth. I don't remember. It was all covered. Now, you cannot, in most storage auctions, you can't walk in, okay? You have to stand, at, you can't touch anything and you cannot walk in. It must be undisturbed. If you feel that somebody has gone through that locker beforehand if you feel if you, i mean sometimes you'll literally see footprints that means somebody's walked in there because a lot of those lockers have been abandoned for years so there's dust build up um you, people like me will not bid if we feel that it's been disturbed we want something that's been unsearched you know we want to be the ones who find the goodies okay so um this one had everything covered with blankets you couldn't see anything in this locker except a few tiny clues and one of them was underneath a blanket that was very close to the front i could see a little piece of antique or vintage wood veneer peeking out and then way in the back i could see this tin it was like a marshmallow tin and it was pretty beat up, but it was definitely, you know, genuine vintage antique. It was not a remake. So I told my husband, I'm going to bid on this locker. And he was like, oh, okay. And that was like, he was shocked because I'd gone for so many months just watching and learning and never bidding. And um, so I start bidding and I get in this like little bidding war with this person. And I think I, he goes, how much are you going to bid for? And I go, I think I'll bid up to $650. Now you have to know that my husband is one of the most negative people in the world. And I'm one of the most positive. So it's sometimes very difficult for us to get along. But I, don't, I just do it. In case you haven't met me, I just do what I want anyway. Okay. <laughs> so, I know. Again, you're shocked. I might need to give you a minute to breathe. Um, most companies flip, you have 24 hours to get your items out. If you talk to the manager, if it's a huge locker, like a 20 by 20, and it's stacked to the ceiling and stuff, a lot of times you can talk to the manager of the storage unit and ask them if you can have a little extra time. I've done that before, and they've given me up to 72 hours. So, But most of the time, it's 24 hours. You need to have it out the next day, and it has to be clean. I mean, you need to sweep it when it's done. So um, one of their biggest complaints is when people leave trash behind. If you go to American Auctioneers and do a storage auction with them, they make you put a deposit down the first time that you bid, and they will give it back after they um, view that the locker is indeed 100% clean. If 
It is not. You never get to go to an American auctioneer's um, storage auction again which I agree with because for those of us who do this as a business, we take it seriously. We, you know, we respect the rules. So yeah, you got 24 hours, pull that stuff out and get it away. Uh, they'll be happy to rent you a storage locker <laughs> if you need more time though. <laughs> Most of them will be very happy to rent you a storage locker. So, um, I start bidding, I get in a bidding war with this guy and <clears throat> We get to, you know, 600 and I say 650 and my husband, you could feel the steam coming off his neck because he's like, no, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. Stop bidding, you know? And then the guy says 700 and I said 750 <laughs> my husband just about passed out. He was so pissed. He was so mad. And the guy quit bidding and I won the locker. This is my first locker. First time I ever bid. Um, yeah, I, Brandy and her husband are, I don't know. I never, I, I've met them and they're nice people, you know, but I don't know, like their bidding is not my style. So that's all I have to say about that, okay? Anyway. I had to go pick up my daughters from school as soon as we got done bidding. So my husband stayed behind and started sending me pictures. And the pictures of this locker that he was showing me, like, oh my God, I was jumping out of my skin. He sent me uh, pictures of a 1920s stove that was immaculate. Um, if I can, I'll post some pictures in the comments later because I don't have them with me. It, they, there was a um, secretary desk from the early 1800s, late or, or early 1900s, late 1800s, with the rounded glass, and the glass was in perfect tech. Had a little mirror, very gothic looking. It was incredible. Um, you know, to be honest, the big piece. Of, oh, what else? Was, oh, they. I don't really remember. Like, <laughs> it's been a while now. But then. We loaded up that truck and we brought it home. Yeah, I, I, Melissa, I had to leave before I got to dig through the treasures and he's sending me pictures. Oh, I see I got a little, a little spam chat there. Anyway, um, yeah, I had to leave before I dug through the pictures or dug through the items. And so we, we, I get the girls, I, um, I bring them with me over to the storage locker and we start loading up the truck and I think we had a trailer at the time too because I've had many trucks and many trailers. So we load it all up, we bring it home and we start digging through boxes and one of them had this little kind of gypsy looking bag in it. It was really cool, little cool carpet bag I still have it because it's like my little good luck bag now and it was full of Indian head pennies which I, I know I'm a dork but I had never seen them before so I thought they were really cool and I was so excited I'm like oh my god babe look at these and then he came in with this bag cha-ching 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 and I go what are those are and he goes I don't know probably um Mardi Gras coins or something like that but then he dumped them out and there was $3,000 worth of Troy silver. I kid you not. And I was like, oh my God. And it was all um, Spanish silver. And my husband doesn't speak Spanish, but I do. And I was like, babe, that says one Troy ounce. And he's like, no, no, it doesn't. I said, each one of these are one Troy ounce, babe. And he was like, there's no way. And so we were ecstatic. And as we went through box after box after box, it was just like, it was just gold. So it was so exciting. It was just amazing. Like I could not have hit a better locker. In all, we made a good $10,000 return off that one locker. And as I dig through my garage and cleaning out to move, I still find stuff from that locker and I still sell stuff. One of the items I've had listed up for a really long time is a box of 150 
Time magazines from 1937 through 1939. Now, not the entire, like, not every issue from 1937 through 1939. Uh, I'm sorry, Laura. Troy silver means it's it's one ounce of silver. Each coin was one ounce of silver at the time. Silver was very high. the 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 market was high. So, um, I forget how many pieces it was now, but I know that we sold them for three thousand dollars on eBay. And uh, I want to say there was a hundred pieces. We kept three one for each of our children just to keep them. So they'll always remember this. It was a fun time for all of us. And um, so I wanna say there was 97 and we sold the 97 for $3,000. Anyway, um, so the box was just uh, amazing, okay? And my husband did a lot of research on them and he found out that many of them were worth a lot of money individually and so he had this grand idea that we would sell all of them for uh, for three thousand dollars or something Be <clears throat> but magazines are really hard to sell and yes individually you know i don't know i'm just picking one at random maybe this one is worth 200 or something but that's not how it works when you buy them in, in a lot you want a very reduced price i just wanted to get rid of them it was a huge box taking up all my space look at the cool advertising they are all in, well no i would say that 10 percent are in poor to fair condition 20 percent are in fair to good condition and then 70 percent are in good to excellent condition for their age and that matters to people who collect you know so <clears throat> we have sat on these magazines for years and one of the reasons we have sat on it is because it contains so many of the most historic um people of the year in case you don't know time magazine award somebody the title of person of the year every year. It's been very controversial because Time Magazine feels that it's just somebody good or bad who has influenced people throughout that year. Because it sounds like an honor, many people get offended at who Time Magazine picks for their person of the year. And actually, they used to call it man of the year. I don't remember when they changed that, but don't let them fool you. They act like they didn't call it man of the year. They did. <clears throat> and in 1938, Time Magazine, oh, um, I would say awarded, but they don't like that. Time Magazine gave that distinction to Hitler. It was January 2nd. I'm sorry, I said 1938. It was January 2nd, 1939. Hitler was man of the year. And many people think that the cover is a picture of Hitler, but the cover is not a picture of Hitler. The cover is called From the Unholy Organist, A Hymn of Hate, and it's a picture of what appears to be like um, Hitler playing a pipe organ and, you know, literally people hanging. It's, it's, it's not flattering. See? Sorry, I'm not going to take it out of its plastic sleeve. I know it's very, um, very reflective, but this magazine, one issue. So this is on your bolo, okay? They sell for hundreds to often close to $1,000 in and of itself. And that was the thing that held my husband off from letting me sell these magazines. But I'm a flipper, and if I have money just sitting there, I feel that it's money that could be invested somewhere else. And I tried the two to three thousand dollar range, and nobody was buying these magazines. And to part them out individually did two things: one, 
I hated it because it's in the 1938 and 39 sets that we have are almost complete and I'd be breaking up these huge sets. By the way, um, Stalin is man of the year in one of the issues and I believe Winston Churchill. So the historical value of these were just too great for me to separate. On top of it, the work, 150 magazines to list individually. I don't know. <clears throat> Oh, flip my lid. You better go list that because Hitler Man of the Year is a very valuable magazine and it is why this set sold. So this weekend, so I've had it up now for about a year, maybe longer, at $1,000. And I just saw if somebody gives us $1,000, let's take it. <clears throat> I've had offers over and over again if I would split up the, the set. If I would, you know, and I didn't want to because one, I want to get rid of them all. I want them out of my house. I want them out of my inventory. And two, as I said, I don't want to split up the set. They're so historical. There's some historical value that before Hitler becomes man of the year, there is this trend in Time Magazine to talk about what is going on in Germany. And I think that has a lot of historical value. So I, I didn't want to. To break up the set this weekend i'm sitting there i'm listing stuff and it pops up <laughs> your time magazines just sold for a thousand dollars and i was like what oh my god so the first thing i is i always think well are they gonna pay but then just a few minutes later it says you know this item is paid for and it's ready to ship so, I mean, you know, be ready to ship. And I was like, oh my God. And I told my husband, he's a little sad. I'm not going to lie. He's like, I really like those magazines. But the reality is we don't do anything with them. They literally just sit there. I'm not going to take them out of their plastic sleeves and look at them because oil from your fingers um, degrades the paper and the printing. And every time you touch them, you are actually destroying them a little bit more so what am i going to do with 150 magazines that nobody's allowed to look at it's like when your mom would put plastic over your couches and you weren't allowed to sit on them why the hell did you buy couches that we weren't allowed to sit on why the hell do we have magazines we're not allowed to look at so i don't know i don't know Trump's issue. It's not worth a lot to me. I'll tell you that much. So anyway, um, they sold and I'm pretty excited about that. But when you sell something big, you know, especially something we're talking about like a thousand dollars, it can be, it can be very exciting, but then doubt slips in and then you start worrying and stressing and that's kind of what happens. So a few minutes, at, well, you know, not a few minutes, but maybe half hour or so later, um, the buyer messages me and said he wanted to make sure that it was every issue from 1937 through 1939, which it's not. And so I let him know right away, it is not, but please read my description because each and every issue was individually listed. And if you have any questions, contact me you know, sometime today, last night or today, because I won't be shipping until Tuesday. And I want to make sure you're completely happy before I ship these out. He seems like a really legit buyer and he didn't really come back with any more questions. I told him to just make sure that he looks over that list. And he said he wanted to make sure that he was getting the Hitler, the man of the year. And I said, you're not only getting Hitler man of the year, you're also getting one where Hitler is featured on the cover, where a lot of people think that one is the Hitler man of the year, but it's not. Um, and other, <laughs> Vivian Lee is on this. Um, uh, Queen Elizabeth II, when she's a young, pretty young lady, I always joke, I said, you know, we have 150 magazines and every single person is dead but Queen Elizabeth. Um, I'm serious. Like, <laughs> I can't tell you how many of these people are dead and she's still ticking. Anyway, so I think it's going to be good. I I did not charge him everything for shipping. I'll probably have to pay 
about $20 of the shipping, maybe a little bit more, 20 to 40 on purpose. I, and I say in my ad that I'm going to pay for part of the shipping and you're going to pay for part of the shipping. And now, um, I will definitely be insuring these. And these are going to Canada through the global shipping program um, on eBay. So I'm pretty excited about that too because here's the thing. Once I ship it from here to Kentucky, as long as it shows delivered and everything's in Kentucky and eBay sends me the little email that says we got your shipment and now we're sending it off to Canada, then anything that happens to it from Kentucky to Canada is on eBay, not on me. So if he gets these items and for any reason, God forbid, they are damaged, I will not have to refund him the $1,000. eBay will have to. But I will be insuring them for the process from here to Kentucky. You see what I'm saying? So um, I feel very covered in this transaction. Uh, but, you know, I am nervous. And I will hold on to that money for a full 30 days because I have a 30-day return policy just to make sure that, or at least until I hear from the buyer and he tells me, that he got exactly what he wanted. You know, I will not be doing any partial refunds if he gets them and he says, oh, you know, blah, 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 no partial refunds. If he wants, he can return them to me at his price and I'd be happy to refund him then. So I'll be holding on to the money. People who spend the money on a large purchase like this before they know that the buyer is okay are doing themselves a very bad disservice. I've seen people lose their eBay accounts over doing that. They'll sell, sell something for a couple hundred dollars. The next day they'll go and spend all that money, pay their bills, whatever. And then three or four days later, the person wants to return it. And now the seller doesn't have the money in the account to refund. You can't do that. You need to hold on to that money because even PayPal can, dispute it for up to, I think, 90 days or something. So you need to hold on to that money. I won't hold on to it for 90 days because I do have money that I can back it up with if something happens with PayPal or something. But um, 30 days, I do hold on to the money. So does anybody have any questions for me in the chat today? I just wanted to share with you guys. I'm pretty excited about the sale. My, my numbers have been down. Um, because I had, you know, went on vacation during Christmas and then I got very sick after Christmas. And so this boosted my numbers back up there and I want to keep that mo momentum going. So today I'm going to be listing, listing, listing and, um, and also shipping, getting stuff ready for tomorrow's shipment. So, um, no questions. Nobody has any questions about storage auctions or shipping big items or, Time magazines or Hitler? <laughs> I don't know anything. <laughs> I can't tell you anything about Hitler. Well, anything you don't already know. Bad man killed people. Holocaust. There you go. Okay. I will keep you guys posted. I will let you know if he loves it. I'm pretty excited. He seems like a really nice guy. And I've been, you know, I think it's important to right off the bat when you sell something give the buyer some reassuring, you know, reassuring feelings. So I had emailed him first and said, I want to thank you for your purchase and let you know that Monday is a holiday in the United States. And so I will not be able to ship your item until Tuesday. I will be shipping it with great care and I will be um, shipping it with insurance. And so I just like to let the buyers feel reassured about purchasing large items from me as well, right from the get go. Um, I found out about storage auctions probably from another flipper, to be honest, Laura. I'm not sure, but at the time, storage wars, what wars was pretty big too. So I think I, I Googled it or found it on Facebook. I, I'm really not sure how I found out where the storage auctions are, but I can tell you that you can Google that and find local storage auctions near you. And so after I started doing it quite a bit, we bought a lot of lockers for a while there. <laughs> we made, I, I will tell you a funny story. So after the first locker, I thought, 
I'm freaking awesome. I know exactly what I'm doing. I just bought a locker for $750 and flipped it for $10,000. What? I'm the queen, okay? So the next time we went, they were filming again. And, um, but I just stayed for this one. And I bid on some because I saw this cool antique lamp. And I forget some, there was something else that caught my eye. I don't remember. Oh, a trailer. There was a trailer in there. And I know, I knew it was a smaller trailer, but you know, a trailer sell. So I think I paid 800 for the second locker and I ate it. It was just so full of garage sale crap. And I lost my cockiness right away. It, it, I ended up probably making my money back, but I never freaking did that again. After that, every locker we bought, we made so much money off of because I took my experience from the first two and I started, you know, buying smarter. And one of the things, my biggest tip is do not bid on what you cannot see. What I'm saying is if you know the value of a bike and that's why you're bidding, that's awesome. If you see a safe, do not assume there is anything in that safe. Don't go, I'm bidding on this locker because there's a safe and there might be gold in there because usually there's not. There's paperwork or nothing. It's, you know, broken or whatever. <laughs> so bid on only what you can see and what you know. Um, let's see. Thank you very much, Kelly. It was a big sale on. I'm really excited about it. I need my numbers to go up. Listen, units have gone for... $25 in front of me. One time Doug bid on a unit for a hundred bucks and it was a small unit. I want to say like maybe four feet or like let's say five feet wide, three or four feet deep, but about 10 feet tall and it was filled with rubber made um, boxes. And he brought it home and you guys will kill me because it was full of clothes from the 90s and I didn't know crap at the time about clothes from the 90s. We did end up making a lot of money on it because the newer clothes that we took, we took to Plato's Closet and we got good money from them. And then we took a lot of the other stuff to swap meets, but eventually I, I gave all those 90 clothes away because I didn't know anything about clothes yet. So you can, for $100 or less, buy storage lockers. But again, don't bid on what you can't see because he was thinking there is going to be more than every single box. There was something like 32 boxes. They were full of clothes. Okay. Um, yes, I met Barry. Yes, I met Barry. I'll talk to you about Barry later. Barry, Barry, Barry. Met Barry many times. One time he kept doing this thing to just purposely scare the crap out of me. I think it's actually on one of the shows, but I don't know if you see me. You just see him doing what he's doing. But what you don't know is they retook that shot over and over again, and I was getting really kind of pissed because they, made, they were like, stay there. He was taking his water bottle, and when he bid, he would slam it really hard on this um, storage door you know to another locker right next to me and almost hit me and it was really loud and he thought it was just freaking hilarious that I thought he was going to hit me with this bottle and it was super loud and we kept having to retake that and it was really annoying but I'll tell you the other story about Barry later um yeah you can't get a storage locker this week Laura <laughs> anyway all right well if that's it for now i love you guys thank you so much for coming and chatting with me this morning um if you have any other questions feel free to leave me a comment as always i'm not going to ask you to like or comment or share the video but if you want to that's cool and um you know if you feel like subscribing that's cool too Anyway, love you guys. Have a very prosperous, prosperous day. Bye.